I'm a gardener. Or at least I like to think of myself as a gardener because I like to grow things. One of the things I've learned by growing these tomato plants is that it's amazing to me how they were, and I recorded it here on video, but they were only oh, about yay high, about yay wide, and now they're huge. They've exploded the milk crate, and they're huge and growing. And they continue to grow up and grow out. And you know, if I sat here and watched them for a while, you know, just kept watching them for a couple hours, I wouldn't notice them growing. Matter of fact, I'd probably think they were dead because they weren't growing. But if I walked away and I came back, say tomorrow, man, I'd notice they were huge because they're growing, oh, I don't know, about three or four inches every day. I'd think, wow, they've grown so much. Of course, I have some other plants that, even this one, my cherry tomatoes, they're growing slow, but if I sat and watched it, yeah, this wouldn't look like it's growing. You know, they uh, kind of take their own time, you know, this one, because it just grows slowly, but if I go away and come back, then I, I'll see that it uh, has grown quite a bit, because it's growing, oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe about an inch a day. But you know, none of these tomatoes have any fruit. So, if I went by what some people say to me, you judge a tree by its fruit, I'd have to throw these out because they're not fruit bearing. Now, that might be stupid to you because if you're like me, you know that in its season, it bears fruit. It takes planting, growing, developing, becoming fruitful, flowers produced, and then gradually when it's time, little tiny fruits will come out and they'll begin to grow. And then I'll harvest the fruit. But you know, that's in God's timing. That's in His season, not mine. I think sometimes people do that to each other. You know, they take a look at each other and they say, ha, you're, you're like one of them, you know, and they call them out and criticize them and beat them up and tell them what's wrong with them and don't let God take care of them, you know, and don't let God pot them and plant them and move them around and accuse them of all kinds of things. Now, I'll admit, my little tulips back here, when I got those little bulbs, they were ugly. They are just kind of like little bulbs, but you see, I knew what they were good for. So I put them in a pot. I knew that when I watered them, at a certain time, in a certain season, in a certain way, they were going to grow up and bloom. And when it's warm, they open up to the sun and show a beautiful blossoming spirit, so to speak. I think people are like tulips, you know? They don't look like much when you get them. Because, you know, they're just kind of a bulb. You know, but you stick that sucker in the soil, give it a little water, you know, put it in the right pot, you know, and keep it protected from the frost, you know, and the cold, you know, and people that really are going to, you know, kind of condemn it and beat it up. Then I think, you know, you get a good harvest out of it. You know, not everybody's called to be a gardener. You know, not everybody can see the good in each other. Not everyone can see what God is doing in a person's life. I kind of think that's what the difference is between when someone tells me I ought to be a pastor and I look at the pastors all around me and I say, if a pastor is taking care of sheep, I only can take care of so many sheep. But I can only take care of so big a garden, which right now I have, I think, four tomato plants and I have to take them in when it gets frost frosty because if I don't they'll die so I can only take care of what I can handle 
And for me, I always thought that if I was a good shepherd, I'd only take care of so many sheep. But if I was like greedy and kind of like not caring about the flock, you know, or not caring about, you know, what's going on with them, then I'd probably try to get as many as I could so that some of them survive. Maybe I'm a little weird. Maybe I'm strange in some ways, you know, about gardening, because I only get, you know, a certain portion of money to go out and buy, you know, little bulbs, or sometimes I just get starts from somewhere, and I have to make the best use of them, you know. And funny thing is, I get them from the cheapest store I can find, and sometimes I even get them free, and they all grow for me. And then I divide them up, and they grow again, and they keep growing. You know, it's kind of kind of a weird multiplication process. You know, every time that my my little plants get you know kind of big and start to widen out, I split them up and put them into different pots and keep getting more and more plants. My house is getting filled. I kind of like that. Now I don't know if you get the analogy here. I don't know if you even care about the analogy, but me when I look at these. Tomato plants, how well they're growing, how fast they're developing. I take them and I move them into sun to help them along, you know. I try to encourage their growth, you know. I, I kind of move them wherever the sun is, you know, and then because it's shady, I only get morning sun, you know, and I've got some bushes blocking. I have to kind of move them around, you know, and catch as much sun as I can. So that way they'll get, you know, a full spectrum of light, you know, a full amount of what they need to grow you know, I'd produce fruit. So I move them around to make sure they're okay, and each one seems to have a little difference, so I, I kind of check the water, you know, with my finger, and, you know, make sure that they're all equally watered, you know, and make sure that they're growing, because if they're not, you know, I'd go ahead and fertilize them and take care of them. Maybe I'm a little weird that way. I kind of think that's what God does with each of us, you know. I don't think he really told us to go out and, you know, like, beat each other up or stomp on each other. I think he kind of wanted us to be like gardeners, you know? I think that's why he put us in a garden in the first place. Not so that we could become technicians, you know, like people do, or soldiers like people do, or become all these other things like people do. But I think that the least, you know, of the professions that now has become like, no, you don't want to do that, is maybe that's what we should become. You know, farmers, gardeners, taking care of growing things, not just for ourselves, you know, but maybe to share with others, you know, kind of a small little plot, you know, to take care of each other, not a big thing, you know, like a big mass marketing thing, you know, because it seems to me like people nowadays, you know, they're giving up this mega stores, they're giving up all this mega purchases, they're going to these little mom and pop shops, you know, places that grow their own veggies, you know, and take care of it because when they see who's taking care of them, they know what kind of produce they're getting. You know, we're not getting maybe some things that could grow in some other country, but if you go meet the people, maybe that makes sense. Because you see, a person who takes care of what they're growing cares about it. And a person who just wants to make money just wants to make money. I kind of think I'm a little weird. Maybe I'm a little strange, because I like to give everything I can away free, especially when it comes to God, because God pretty much has given me everything I can enjoy freely, and really don't have to work real hard to get it, you know? Matter of fact, every time that I've gone to work real hard, I was able to make money. I wasn't very happy. Me? I kind of look at these plants and I think they're happy. I think they're blessed. What about you? Are you happy where you're at? Can you say today that you're happy? You know, happy with your life, happy with your church, happy with your spouse, happy with your children, happy with your job or lack thereof. You know, just happy in general. 
Now, you see, I'm sick today, so I'm still happy. Just don't laugh as much <laughs> as I normally do. I don't uh, run around as much as I normally do. I slow down because I'm sick today. But you know, I still took care of the plants, and I'm still happy. How about you? What are you doing today that, you know, makes you feel happy? And I don't mean righteous, because I meet all kinds of people on the internet that, you know, they want to tell me about, you know, Christian this, Christian that, and all these other things, and, you know, sometimes they get too righteous for me, and I just kind of go, well, you know, I'm happy for you. You know, I really am. You know, if that's what makes you happy, if you feel like you've got to be politically active, and you feel like you got to get involved in all these things that are passing away, you know, the world and the lust thereof, Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, you know. You really got to get involved in all those. Hey, go ahead. If that's what, you know, makes you happy, okay. You know, but me, I kind of like what God likes. And I think God looks down on the things of man and wonders, what in the world are you doing? I don't think God looks at our technology quite the same way we do. I think he looks at his creation different than we do. I think he looks at it as a crowning jewel of his imagination that he created to reveal his capability as well as his Godhead and other things that we would learn from. But you see, when I use technology, it's like a tool to go back into creation or to take from creation in order to try to find out something about something that really I'm not going to the source. Where it seems like, when I look real close, I begin to examine things, you know. I kind of think about what Jesus said, you know, about how things grow. When I look real close, you know, I kind of am reminded of words Jesus used. You know, when I am that close to plants and dirt, thinking about what Jesus said, I don't even get confused by translations. Because I know what he said fits. Noah was a just man. The just shall live by faith. Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, I, I don't know about you, but I, I kind of like that, you know, because I can always feel guilty if I think about myself, you know, if, I, if I'm focused in on me, you know, I already know kind of, you know, who I am. And I kind of feel, you know, sinful, you know, like, whoa, what was me? That's a holy God and I'm not, you know. But, you know, when I read stuff like that, you know, I know I have peace with God because God makes me feel peaceful, you know. When I blow it, I go ask forgiveness. When I've messed up, I go ask him to help me to rectify it. I ask him to not just take me out of it, but to remake me so that I can go through it, so that I could endure it, so that I could learn something from it and become less like what I was and more like what he is. And when I do that, I don't know. It's kind of like the plants, you know? I don't see it so much happening, you know, like today. You know? I keep looking at myself in the mirror and I keep going, you know what, I ain't seeing nothing happening. But you know, people, when they look at me after so many years, they say, you haven't changed at all. <laughs> oh well, that's the way I am. But I know that when God comes back, when Jesus returns, he'll have seen that little seed that he put in my heart has become a big vine full of fruit. And he's going to harvest that fruit and say, well done. I like having peace with God. Don't you? Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now, the righteousness of God, without the law, is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, 
unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Unto all and all them that believe is the righteousness of Jesus made manifest even before there was law, even without the law. So you see, this whole thing about law, it's just, you know, you don't get it. The righteousness of God was already determined. We joy, or rejoice, you could say we rejoice, but we joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified. I kind of like that. You know, since he did it, and he's doing it, and he's figured it out, I'm not so worried about what I'm doing as much as what I want to be. And really what I want to be is just kind of like pleasing in his sight, you know, daily, rather than worried about all my, well, quote unquote, holiness or righteousness or, you know, trying to be perfect like people say or trying to make me into something they want me to be. I kind of like being me, you know? I'm not perfect and I'm certainly not righteous and I'm definitely not holy. But you know, I am justified. I didn't have much to do with it. <laughs> but I sure am glad for the one who did. Because the one who did justify me, not only saved me, but he called me. Because he did. I'm kind of like these plants. I'm getting ready to just blossom, bloom, <sighs> and be like one big old fat juicy tomato. <laughs> Maybe not finger looking good, but delicious. You know, when I look at you, I see a plant. And every time I come back to look at you, I see you grow. 